Thanks for joining me. I'd like to take a moment to speak with you about the coronavirus. Everyone everywhere is talking about the coronavirus. It's very serious. It's global. It's a major public health concern right now. And there are a lot of unanswered questions. In just a moment, I'm going to speak with someone who will answer many of the most important questions. Dr. David DeRose from Compass Health Consulting. He is a physician, uh, an author. We have featured, featured Dr. DeRose on It Is Written several times. He has a lot of wisdom that he's going to share with you, things you don't want to forget and things you will want to share with others about the coronavirus. Dr. DeRose in just a moment. After Dr. DeRose, something even more important, something even more important than the physical threat or the physical steps that you can take to protect yourself against the coronavirus. We're going to speak to Dr. David DeRose and then we'll talk about what is absolutely the most important thing. And I know Dr. DeRose would agree. But first, let's begin by speaking about the coronavirus with Dr. David DeRose. Dr. DeRose from Compass Health Consulting, thanks so much for joining me. Dr. DeRose, tell me what we really need to know about the coronavirus. Well, I think the most important thing to emphasize, first of all, John, is this is one of a family of viruses and coronaviruses. For many people, it's a, a, a new guy, if you will, on the block to them. But if you've ever had a cold, it's very likely you've had a coronavirus caused cold. There's other viruses that cause colds. But this particular strain of coronavirus is uh, especially perplexing because of its characteristics. It's causing widespread problems, and it is something that we definitely need to be concerned about. And uh, I'll just say it this way, it's really a call to every one of us to be serious about putting healthy lifestyle practices into play in our own lives. You said we should be concerned, and here's the maybe the noble or unknowable question, how concerned should we be? Well, you do a Bible-based show, John, and one of the things that uh, I appreciate is this scriptural emphasis in, on it is written. The Bible multiple times gives us this counsel to fear not. So I think as we're talking about levels of concern, I don't think we need to be paralyzed with fear, but we need to channel, I would say, a real concern that this is going to be something that is with us for quite a while as a world population. It does not look like something that we're going to easily get our arms around as far as uh, the, the healthcare community, the public health community, and we're going to be dealing with it. And that means that we need to be attentive. We need to be saying, improving our hygiene practices. We've been getting that message a lot, but also lifestyle practices. Focus on those healthy lifestyle practices that we know we should be doing. It's even more important when there is a potentially serious virus in our backyard. Two questions. First one is who's most at risk? Second one, give us some practical steps. So who's most at risk? And I don't mean to say the others, are, the rest of us are not. Uh, but but what constitutes real risk and and then tell us what can we do in practical terms? Well, as far as risk, if you look at the data that's coming out of China, there's a clear relationship between age and risk. The older you are, the greater risk you have of serious disease. And it's really hard to get at uh, how serious uh, that risk is. If you look across the board, we're talking about what we know, somewhere around 3% of the people that get known disease to this point uh, end up with fatal disease. But the evidence suggests that there's a lot of people who are undetected, so that figure is probably actually much lower. In the studies out of China, no one under 10 years of age fatality, no fatalities in those uh, young children. So this is really good news for parents, for grandparents. But uh, when we get up in years and we're concerned about our kids, well, we got to look in the mirror because those of us, as we get older, higher risk, and especially if we've got pre-existing illnesses, chronic diseases like diabetes, uh, chronic diseases like uh, heart disease, lung disease. And then that brings us to some of the lifestyle discussions. So what do we do? Well, actually, when it comes to uh, things that we can do to really take charge of this, well, first of all, we can't get into a situation where we're going to be in zero risk. So all this idea that we can totally avoid it, that if we just wear a mask all the time, that's safe. In fact, the way this seems to be transmitted, wearing a mask out in, uh, in low risk public situations is not helping you at all. So hoarding medical supplies, not a good idea because those masks do help. If someone's got an active infection, they're in the hospital, for them to wear a mask, 
or for health professionals to wear those higher grade uh, protective gear. So definitely hygiene is a place. A lot of common things can kill this, uh, this virus. Hydrogen peroxide, these alcohol-based uh, uh, gels, bleach. So being sanitary as far as surfaces, because if you touch a doorknob and then touch your face, if a person was using that same door before you, they can have left those viruses there and then you can go ahead and inoculate them in your eyes or nose and that's where the infection can take root. So all of these things that we're hearing about as far as hygiene, very much appropriate. The flip side of it is lifestyle, regular physical exercise, keeping fresh air circulating through your, your house, especially in your bedroom, uh, especially if there's someone who's under the weather, making sure that room is ventilated. Uh, diet, eating a healthy diet, avoiding uh, the high fat items, avoiding those high sugar items. And if someone does have a disease that's potentially reversible with lifestyle, like high blood pressure, diabetes, this is really a time to get serious about getting on as good a lifestyle as you can, because there's evidence if you can control those blood sugars, if you can perhaps eliminate some of those medications, there is some question being uh, discussed in some circles as to whether some of the common medications we use for common conditions may increase our, our risk if we are exposed. Give me a couple of resources. Someone wants to say, I, I need to get my hands on a book. I need to get my hands on, on, on something to learn a little bit more about uh, preparing myself to face this and things like it. What are the good resources you'd recommend? Well, I mean, there's great stuff that's coming out all the time on some of the, the well uh, updated websites, you know, the Centers for Disease Control, they're putting out information on proper hand washing techniques. I mean, this is huge. It's not just sterilizing surfaces, it's, it's washing hands and uh, not touching our face unless we've just washed our hands. So uh, great resources there. Uh, a lot of people have told me, Dr. DeRose, you need to come out with another edition of your book, Evading Ebola. And I was just uh, reviewing this today. Uh, it's a book that I put out some uh, six years ago, John, during the Ebola crisis. But I looked at a lot of the high points, a simple book talking about practical strategies for exercise, hygiene, diet, smoking cessation. So whether you go to some of these uh, updated websites that are doing a, a great job of getting cutting information out, or uh, whether you you know pick up a resource that's been out there for a long time, like evading Ebola, I know I probably should, uh, if I had infinite time in the world, come out with an update. People have been telling me that's needed. But I would just say take advantage of what's out there. Your book, The Methuselah Factor, that can be ordered online and from us here at It Is Written. You'd agree that that, too, would be a very helpful resource because it's a wonderful book. Well, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned it. It's uh, I'm getting ready to do some community programs. The Methuselah Factor is about improving blood fluidity. And there is some really interesting research, John, that uh, improving blood fluidity may decrease our risk uh, from this, or at least from, from similar infections. There aren't any studies that I've seen looking at this particular uh, coronavirus and uh, its relationship to blood fluidity. But there are those connections, and we're going to be promoting people going through that 30-day program as a strategy to improve their health, their lifestyle, and decrease their potential risk of, uh, uh, of this infection. Let me ask you this. There's, there, there are industries popping up right now, people getting fleeced, buying all kinds of wonder products and magical things going to protect you from coronavirus. Yes or no? Well, surely the sanitizing agents, the sanitizing agents clearly have a place, but these are, are not proprietary agents. I mean, anybody can go into your, your, your dollar store and buy bleach or, or even a simple 70% uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol. But having said that, uh, a lot of these gimmicks are just that, they're, ju they're gimmicks, and including the, the whole uh, realm of masks. In fact, John, if uh, we really wanted to have an interesting dialogue sometime, someone could even put forth the argument, if you've got a good immune system, uh, why not get exposed to a small amount of the virus and some casual uh, acquaintance, not when someone's actively sick and coughing, because it would have uh, a vaccination-like effect. Now, I mean, I think there's some dangers with that logic, but, but the point is simply, if we think that avoiding this totally is the best strategy, no, the best strategy, if you want to know what it is, it's to, if you could do it, is just get a small exposure to the virus. And by the way, there's at least two different strains of the virus circulating, we now know that. Uh, get exposed to them, get an inapparent infection where you don't get sick, and then develop immunity to it. So that would clearly be the best answer, not just to, to hide in a cave and uh, have no exposure whatsoever. 
Dr. DeRose, I know you're busy. You've got things to do. God bless you in your ministry. Thanks so much for taking the time to join me. Great to be with you, John. Keep up the good work. I said a moment ago we would speak about something even more important than the physical threat brought on by the coronavirus. Illness in the world reminds us that we are in a global battle between good and evil. What are you doing about your spiritual health? You and I both know that we will die one day from something, if not the coronavirus, something else. We don't want to forget that there are people in our midst all over the place dying right now, wrestling with all kinds of very serious medical situations. But what do you do about the result of sin in your life, not just the result of illness in your life? Isn't it interesting the world is so urgent? We want to be well right now. What if a fraction of that urgency was channeled into wanting to be spiritually well? We see reflected in this global issue of great importance the fact that we are in a very, very serious war. How are you doing spiritually? There's a battle between good and evil raging. When Jesus comes back, and He will, where will you be eternally? Will you have chosen Jesus in good spiritual health or otherwise? I want to share with you three simple Bible verses, very good biblical principles that I think will really be a help and a blessing to you as you consider spiritual health in this. If all we talk about is the coronavirus, if you manage to live to 200 and yet you're not experiencing good spiritual health, what in the world was that for? Look with me in Acts chapter 16, and we're going to read verse 31, where Paul and Silas say to a certain individual in Philippi, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, and your household. You got that. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Right now, you're trying to figure out what physician to believe or what news report to believe. Are you believing on Jesus? He's the one who brings spiritual good health. This is very serious. The battle is real. Look around the world. You say, oh, what's going on? It seems as though the world is going crazy. Well, that's a reflection of the reality of the spiritual battle that we're in. So number one, remember this, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You can do that. That's a simple, straightforward step that anyone can take. The next verse we're going to look at is found later in the Bible. We're looking in 1 John. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wouldn't it be great if you knew the doctor or you had the medication that would cleanse you of coronavirus, of the common cold, of the flu, of diabetes, of back pain, give you your eyesight back so that it's 100%, cure you of heart disease. Wouldn't that be wonderful? No such magical cure exists, except there is a wonderful divine remedy for sin. Are you availing yourself of that? 1 John 1, 9. What did it say? If we confess our sins, what would God do? Being faithful and just, He will forgive you and cleanse you. The disease of sin will be gone. While the world is focusing on physical health, why don't we focus on our spiritual health as well and make sure that we are in optimal spiritual condition? Confess your sins and God will forgive you. Whatever it is you've done, He'll give you peace and take away your guilt. And then this, okay, once I've done this, am I just going through the motions? What happens next? Let me share with you one of my favorite verses in all of the Bible. It's Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13, and it says, For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for His good pleasure. So once you believe and once you confess, now Jesus lives His life in you. How's that working out for you? Are you experiencing God in your life? If no, take hold of Jesus. If it's bumpy, ask God to do again in His life, in your life, what He wants to do, and He will. And keep turning to God. God, I need you. I claim Jesus as my righteousness. I will never be good enough, but you, Lord, you are the only one good enough. We believe, we confess, and then we expect, we ask, we accept Jesus working His will, His life in us. Diseases come and go. Some come and hang around. Today, coronavirus, tomorrow we can be assured there's going to be something else. How's it going to affect you and me? We can't really know. We'll do the best we can, but some things are outside of our control. One thing that's not outside your control is eternity. If you believe, 
confess, invite Jesus to live his life in you, you'll have good spiritual health in this world and you will enjoy optimal spiritual health for all of eternity. I want to thank Dr. David DeRose for joining me. Thank you for joining me. And let's together thank God that he gives us good spiritual health now and forever as we trust in him. I'm going to pray with you. Father in heaven, give us grace to trust in you. We believe, cleanse us, forgive us, and then live in us to do your will. We pray. Thank you that you are greater than any illness. Thank you that you can restore us and keep us spiritually. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. God bless you.